Hey everyone, I'm Brian Wilcox. And I am Jules Taylor. Today we will be talking about a clinical assay and that is the biuret test for serum protein. The analyte of interest in this assay is total protein. So to start our presentation, I will hand this over to Brian. Thanks Jules. So today we're going to start off with an introduction on protein why tests for proteins, then we're going to talk about the burette test reagents, the reaction of the burette test, and the clinical significance. So why protein? So let's talk about our analyte and why it's so important. Firstly, proteins are the most abundant product in blood serum apart from the formed elements. They are the product of multiple amino acids coming together and are the building blocks for cells, tissues, hormones, and enzymes. Proteins also serve as an energy reserve for the body. So which proteins are we talking about? Firstly, I'd like to make note that total protein refers to the combination of both albumins and globulins. Albumins are produced in the liver and its principal function is to keep blood in circulation by maintaining osmotic pressure, so it acts as the sponge. Globulin is a general term because it includes alpha-1, 2, beta, and gamma globulins. Their primary function includes aiding in blood clots and the formation of antibodies. The top right diagram is an example of albumin, and the bottom diagram is an example of gamma globulins or antibodies. So as medical laboratory scientists, how can one test for the presence of total protein in a sample? We can utilize the Bayeretz test, which is a test that has been in use since the end of the 19th century. As seen here, the Bayeret reagent is an alkaline mixture dissolved in sodium hydroxide and contains copper sulfate, potassium hydroxide, and potassium iodide. Now a little bit about the reaction. In reference to the top picture, two amino acids are coming together to form a protein by way of a peptide bond, as seen in red. The peptide bond is what the Burette test targets to determine the presence of total protein. In reference to the bottom picture, in alkaline conditions, the copper ion in the reagent with the peptide bond shift copper's wavelength to a shorter one, producing a purple color from the blue color. And now I'm going to hand the presentation over to Jules. Thanks, Brian. So now that we have established, now that we have a positive test for protein, how exactly do we quantitate our protein sample? How do we know how much protein is present in our solution? One thing to note is that the intensity of the color is proportional to the amount of peptide bonds that are present in the solution. To determine the total amount of protein in our sample, we need a spectrophotometer, a series of standards, and the patient's sample. The spectrophotometer measures the absorbance of the solution at wavelength at 540 nanometers. The concentration is proportional to the absorbance, and this will give us the concentration of our protein. To follow up, we will then use our standards to establish a calibration curve, which will tell us the exact amount of protein in our sample. So what is the clinical significance of a total protein test? Total blood protein is not used to diagnose a specific disease. However, abnormal protein levels are associated with various diseases. This includes chronic infections, malnutrition, certain cancers, and use in monitoring inflammation. It is important to note that normal blood protein is between 6.0 and 8.3 grams per deciliter. Higher than normal blood protein levels is associated with various diseases such as chronic infections involving HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. 
It is also associated with various cancers such as multiple myeloma. Lower than normal protein levels can be due to liver disease, malnutrition, inadequate absorption, and oftentimes a result of trauma involving extensive burns and hemorrhage. This has come to the end of our presentation. We hope you enjoyed our video. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.